For this video, we're going to start with a very simple question. Using everything we know already, how does the internet actually work? And when you think about it, there is a lot of information in there. So let's trim this down and be really specific. When I connect a computer to a new network and then visit a website using a browser, what underlying processes are going on that allow that to happen? There's a lot of moving parts to consider. There's IP addresses, DHCP, the OSI model and bandwidth. And so the simplest way to understand it is to draw out a diagram. So let's go ahead and try and draw out what this might look like. So I'm going to start off by drawing a host on my network. So here's my host down here. Um, the first thing that happens, host, first thing that happens is uh, I join a new network and unfortunately I've got no IP address which means I can't communicate with anything else on that network. So what I do is I send out a request on that uh, IP, on that network to a machine in the hopes that it will find a DHCP server. Now most networks will have a router so let's draw our router on there uh, and that router will pass the information on to a DHCP server. Now if you're doing this at home more often than not your DHCP server if I draw that on your DHCP server DHCP server uh, will actually be on your router on bigger networks your DHCP server might be somewhere else but the first thing we do and I'm going to draw this in red is we send out a bit of information a DHCP request which gets passed on to the server and then passed back to us and this gives us our IP address it essentially um, goes through that DHCP process and now we get an IP address so I'm going to say that we've been given the IP address 10.0.2.1 um, now we know how to communicate to things on that network so once we've done that let's say we want to browse to www.google.com so we're going to try and go to Google what happens there is slightly different again so we um, that request gets unwrapped gets gets wrapped up down by the OSI model and gets passed on to the router the router then looks up in its route table and says where do I need to send this information but at this point we've got a problem because the router is trying to look up information based on a human readable URL remember we've written google.com so what the router does is the router goes and requests a lookup from the DNS which is just another server um, it can be on the router it can be on an external network but um, let me leave it with this color uh, traffic gets sent to the router then from the router to the DNS the DNS looks up that URL converts it to an IP address and then sends that back um, and that traffic now destined for Google will be replaced with the actual IP address where Google has told us to send our traffic and now our traffic is ready for the internet so I'm going to draw the internet as this green squiggly line out here and let's make our, our web bound traffic it's going to go up here to the router the router will pass it on to the internet and it will pass through the internet now at some point it will arrive at another place if I go back to uh, black you'll get an idea it's going to arrive at another router why at another router well the server that is going to be serving google.com or any other website will also be sitting behind some form of router it'll be sitting down here server um, that router will in its route table realize that this server the IP address of that traffic is on its network and it will pass it on um, sorry let me erase that last one and go back to the appropriate blue we'll get passed back there now that server will look up some information that you've asked it and it will respond it will send that information back via the router via the via the internet back this way all back there once you receive that information on your host um, you will have it displayed to you and the amazing thing is that this system works incredibly quickly incredibly reliably and without you having to understand any of it so 
when you think about it, it's really quite remarkable that all of this process works as often as it does. There is a multi-stage process and many things can go wrong along this way, but it does work most of the time. Um, an interesting question though, is what kind of information is actually being sent by our browser and retrieved by our browser. It is a kind of binary information of ones and zeros, but there's actually some coding above that, and that is HTTP, which you've probably heard of before. It stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's literally an agreed communication language between a client and a server. It is just ASCII characters, so this uh, letter-based encoding of binary numbers. It uses TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, um, and it only has a specific series of of commands get post and delete there are a few others now but get requests information post sends information and delete deletes information from the server an example HTTP get request might look like this so this is one that you might send to a server and you are saying here um, get me the uh, get me this particular file um, in this case index.html uh, I'm using this type of HTTP to communicate and the host, the location where this is stored is here. So this URL is the one that gets looked up and converted to an IP address and that hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, we will get a response from the server that is also an HTTP that looks something like this. This is a get response. We start out by uh, a having a header uh, which confirms the language that we are conversing in. Then we have some form of status number. Um, a 200 here means that the response was successful. Then we'll see some other information, this date, content stuff down here. And then we'll find the body of the request itself. Now, not all requests have bodies. This one does, and it contains a very, very simple piece of HTML that says, hello world. Different responses might look differently. So, uh, for example, there are different status codes than a compare. If they start with a 1, it essentially means I'm still working on your request. The 200 example that we saw before is a successful response. The 300 is a redirection, so the client is required to do something further. A 400 response has some kind of error, so you're asking me for some information that I don't have. And a 500 error is I can't give you something you've asked for for some other reason. 